as a continuation of our previous class on tracheobronchial tree. Today I will discuss on bronchoscopy. This is a rigid bronchoscope and uh, you should be familiar with the parts of a rigid bronchoscope. So it has got an eyepiece here to look into that. It is an eyepiece. Then you have a suction port. This is ventilation. This is for ventilation and this is to connect the uh, light carrier. So the uh, light carrier is taken and uh, it is connected to that, this like this. Okay. So the parts are one and eyepiece. Okay. Eyepiece. Then uh, suction port. It has got a uh, ventilation port to connect to general anesthesia and also a light carrier. Okay. Or a light source. So these are the parts of a rigid bronchoscope. It has got ventilation holes on the side. This are the, these are the ventilation holes. And this is to ventilate the opposite bronchus while doing a bronchoscopy. Okay. So, and uh, in exam, you are usually asked uh, the difference between a rigid bronchoscopy and a rigid esophagoscopy. So, bronchoscope is obviously shorter than an esophagoscope and uh, these ventilation holes are there in bronchoscope only and not in esophagoscope. And the uh, tip of a bronchoscope is pointed or sharp rather than esophagoscope and also it is uh, shorter and it is narrow, narrow lumen. Okay, so the differences are one, it is this bronchoscope is shorter and narrow lumen than an esophagoscope. Then it has got side ventilation holes and the tip is sharp. The tip is sharp in a bronchoscope but it is not sharp, it is rather blunt in an esophagoscope. The uh, indications of bronchoscopy is very important, not only for bronchoscopy, for direct laryngoscopy, for esophagoscopy, for every scope is the Indications are important and you can divide the indications into diagnostic and therapeutic and also for bronchoscopy the indications. So the indication we can divide into diagnostic and therapeutic. Diagnostic to uh, find out the cause and therapeutic means as a part of treatment. So for diagnostic the symptoms of all these for more than four weeks. What all symptoms? Dyspnea bar strider. Okay. So patient is having either a difficulty in breathing in dyspnea or strider. Then hemoptysis. That is uh, splitting of blood. And unexplained chronic cough. All for more than 4 weeks. It is better to go for a bronchoscopy. Then as a part of pan endoscopy. What is pan endoscopy? If the patient has got, for example, if the patient has got an unknown primary, we have to look all the areas because lymph nodes, I, I already explained about the lymph nodes of head and neck. So we want to find out all the areas of draining into that uh, particular lymph node uh, which causes an unknown enlargement of the primary lymph, uh, lymph node. So we have to go as a part of a uh, pan endoscopy, we have to go for a uh, diagnostic nasal endoscopy, nasopharyngoscopy hypopharyngoscopy, direct laryngoscopy and also bronchoscopy. So all these areas has to be covered. So that is pan endoscopy. Then collection of bronchial secretions. For what purpose? That is for cultural sensitivity to find out the fungal, fungal culture. Then for tuberculosis and also for malignant lesions. So collection, bronchial secretions are collected for all these. Then x-ray chest finding. In case of atelectasis, opacity, pleural effusion etc. It is better to go for a uh, bronchoscopy and to take biopsy from suspected lesions. So all these are these diagnostic indications. Then what are the therapeutic indications? As a part of treatment for foreign body removal, if there is a uh, foreign body in the bronchus, we can go with a bronchoscopy and this rigid bronchoscopy is preferred if the foreign body is very large. Okay. Then suction clearance of secretions. If the patient has gotten um, difficulty in coughing, like after a uh, fracture rib or a road traffic accident or if they, there is a 
CVA. Then all these cases, if the patient has got uh, difficulty in coughing and there is collection of secretions, go uh, with the bronchoscopy and uh, uh, suction clearance of secretion. Then as a part of or pre preliminary to a guided percutaneous tracheostomy. In a percutaneous tracheostomy, we always find out whether it is in place by doing a bronchoscopy. Then thermal ablation and removal of tumor. If the removal of tumor is for only as a part of uh, biopsy, it is enumerated under the diagnostic indication and if it is as a part of treatment, then it can be written under therapeutic. And debridement of the of benign stenosis and also balloon dilatation of uh, stenosis. So these are the indications of bronchoscopy. Regarding the techniques of uh, bronchoscopy, uh, first I'll explain the uh, technique of rigid bronchoscopy. For any uh, surgical technique, the explanation should be under the headings of one gen, uh, anesthesia, then positioning, after that the steps of surgery, then postoperative care and complications. Okay. So for rigid bronchoscopy, it, we always need uh, general anesthesia. It can be a closed system or an open system. And the closed system is uh, apneic ventilation. And either it can be a uh, apneic technique or an open system of uh, side port venturi jet ventilation. Okay. And uh, what about the for rigid bronchoscopy? Whereas the flexible bronchoscopy we can do under local anesthesia. Okay. And the position for all rigid uh, endoscopies, whether it is a uh, direct laryngoscopy or a hypopharyngoscopy, esophagoscopy, or a bronchoscopy, the position is the same. That is boy's position. It is not B O Y S, but it is B O Y C E. Okay, it's not girls or boys. It is boy's position, and otherwise called what the sniffing the morning air position or barking dog position. The patient is uh, supine with the extension of atlantic occipital joint. There is flexion of the neck over the chest and extension at the atlantic occipital joint so that the uh, endoscope will pass ex uh, through the uh, larynx. So all these will be in a straight line. The oral cavity, oropharynx and the uh, uh, Laryngopharynx and uh, uh, upper esophagus will be in a straight line. That is this position, that is boy's position. So, the, so what is boy's position? It is supine with the uh, flexion of the neck over the chest and extension at the gland occipital joint. So we keep a uh, head ring under this. Okay, this is how uh, we keep for all rigid uh, endoscopies. Regarding the steps of this uh, bronchoscopy, the patient is in boy's position. First lubricate the tip of the uh, bronchoscope with silicon jelly. And in ENT, we uh, hold every instrument in the non-dominant hand. And this is uh, held like a pen, pen holding in the left hand. My left hand is a non-dominant and the uh, Right hand or the dominant hand in ENT is for instrumentation including forceps for removal of a foreign body and also for suction. Okay, then uh, first after uh, positioning, uh, uh, after giving general anesthesia, look for any neck problem and also any loose teeth and also dangers. That should be corrected first and then protect the eyes of the patient and also Put a teeth guard or a gauze piece in order to protect the teeth of the patient. Okay, then uh, hold it in a uh, pen holding position. With this bevel tip should be upwards. Okay, here it should be upward. And then with this three fingers just retract the upper teeth and the upper lip. Okay, then introduce it. Either you can introduce in the midline till you see the uvula of the patient. Or first you can introduce to the right side. And once you uh, see the uvula, you can shift it into the midline. And then introduce it. As I already told, you will see the uvula. And once you uh, see the uvula, elevate the epiglottis with the tip of the bronchoscope. Then you will see the vocal cords. 
and on reaching the vocal cords turn it uh, in a clockwise direction so that you can pass through the vocal cords into the subglottis area uh, you will reach the trachea and flexible bronchoscopy can be done in an uh, outpatient clinic uh, local anesthesia we usually use a 10% silocaine spray and uh, this can be done on, in the as a day care surgery or in the outpatient unit of uh, department and first the scope is advanced from nose to larynx uh, from the nose epiglottis then you can see the larynx and from larynx from larynx to subglottis and to the trachea and from trachea follow the curve to the carina keeping the scope in the midline you can see the carina with right and left bronchus the distal tip of bronchoscope can be pushed either to the right main bronchus or into the and after bronchoscopy keep the patient in coma position that is in a lateral position with the head low position same as that of after tonsillectomy in the post tonsillectomy position is, is also a coma position and uh, look for uh, respiratory distress cyanosis and also spitting of blood in case of severe respiratory distress the everything needed for a tracheostomy should be kept ready uh, and in the complications you can always divide that into that due to anesthesia and that due to uh, the actual bronchoscopy so that due to anesthesia mainly because of uh, uh, general anesthesia complication laryngeal spasm with uh, laryngeal edema then hypoxia cardiac arrest all are due to uh, anesthesia complication and this uh, introduction of the scope can cause injury to the neighboring structures what are they it can be due to injury to the lip injury to the teeth to the tongue and to the structures passing uh, <clears throat> through the uh, bronchoscope for that you should be very careful while introducing undue force should not be given while introducing a rigid bronchoscope and also a repeated introduction and uh, withdrawal should be avoided and uh, uh, the prolonged uh, procedure time should be avoided especially if you are going for more than 20 minutes there is very high chance of laryngeal edema and spasm especially in infants and children and uh, transient fever can happen especially following a uh, bronchial alveolar lavage and bleeding can go for hemoptysis so these are the complications uh, nowadays i think the only indication for a rigid bronchoscopy is to take a very large bit of uh, biopsy or to take out a very large foreign body so in a bronchoscopy i explained about the both rigid and the uh, flexible bronchoscopy the parts of rigid bronchoscope and the uh, technique of introduction of uh, a rigid bronchoscope and also the postoperative care and also the complications